Seven new locomotives made their public debuts on the railway over the last weekend in June, the culmination of many months' work in development and testing. Although it's not quite as it seems. These are ten and a quarter inch gauge locomotives built for the Institution of Mechanical Engineers annual railway challenge, which brings together teams of students, graduates and apprentices to test their business acumen, design skills and technical know-how. It's intended to attract a new generation of engineers into the industry, but it develops broader skills too. Managing your time well in a big project and uh, working together as a team, sharing out the tasks and uh, encouraging all the other team members, but also the technical challenges, you know, and overcoming the difficulties and uh, in tight time constraints, I think those sort of things. Of course there are also key things related to railways, so they learn about railway suspension and traction and, and those other key things as well. But it's probably the softer, more general skills really that they take away, I think. Just walking around and speaking to the students, you can see how excited they are and it gives them um, those of us who are working with the profession are real excitement as well about uh, what these skills are that are coming through. For the purposes of the competition, teams were required to develop a locomotive that meets the technical specification, manufacture a prototype, submit a design report and give a 10-minute business case presentation, promoting the benefits of their locomotive to the judges, much as a design consultancy might to a large corporation. A series of practical trials then followed, awarding points for ease of maintenance, ride comfort, noise emissions and traction capability, hauling a 600 kilogram load. The ability to store and reuse energy generated through braking was also tested. Coming from London Underground, I mean, we have a lot of stopping and starting in stations, and so we took that into account with this. We thought, you know, typically you come to a stop and you have a dwell time of between 30 seconds and a minute. The best thing about this system is that once you've charged it, there is no way of that energy releasing anywhere else. The Stapleford Miniature Railway near Melton Mowbray has hosted the Railway Challenge since its inauguration in 2012. Each event has been notable for the determination and creativity on show. Even the experienced engineers on hand sometimes learn a thing or two. Our biggest credit goes really towards our mechanical engineering team who this year looked at reducing our weight by using an aluminium car body design. By doing that we were able to actually pull a much better performance out of our regenerative braking system than we ever had before and I think that was one of our biggest factors. When we got that to work, and that was a long time in getting that working, when we got it to work, that final sort of push actually I think gave us the confidence to come here and think we have a really good crack at walking away with this. I'm always impressed each year. I see a new approach to railway engineering. I've learned a lot about things like the effectiveness of mechanical recovery systems for energy storage. I've learned a lot about the potential for fuel cells. Every year I come here I see something new that I can take away. There's no shortage of enthusiasm around the IMEC's Railway Challenge and its success is self-evident, written across the faces of all those who got involved. But beyond that, it serves to raise the railway's profile at a time when it needs new blood and fresh ideas. Could the trains of the future really be developed by engineers whose appetite was whetted on a miniature railway in rural Leicestershire?